Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello and welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Now, believe it or not, it's been well over a year, almost a year and a half since I last did a code review update on Nanogangs, my 8-bit game project for the BBC Micro, written entirely in BBC Basic. Now, many said it couldn't be done, and the Basic, especially on the original 8-bit systems, was just too slow for this kind of arcade adventure game. Naturally, I disagreed. And so, on and off since 2016, I've been working on this project. In that time, there's been a number of major changes, as I've learned how to code better, or gained a better understanding of how the BBC Micro actually works. There's also been some hardware upgrades, which have changed the way I saw the project going forward. One of these has been the storage medium used especially when I finally get around post-lockdown to getting the Beeb SPI SD-based hard drive board completed. If you've not already seen, I've teamed up with engineer Rob Coleman, who has designed the new storage interface. The custom PCBs have been made possible by our partners at PCBWay.com. If you need high quality, inexpensive, professionally made printed circuit boards, then look no further than PCBWay.com. In our recent video, I uploaded a custom Gerber file to my free PCBWare user account and then went through the whole online ordering process. Within less than two weeks, the finished PCBs were with me, ready for assembly. So go and check out that video, links in the description, and don't forget to register for your free account today with PCBWare.com. Anyway, let's have a look at progress on Nanogangs so far. Well, I've decided to return to a lower res, but more colorful build using the BBC Micro's Mode 2, which is a 160 by 256 pixel with 16 colors available. But on a stock unmodified machine, it can only display eight unique colors on screen at any one time. I did, however, use the higher res mode one at 320 by 256 pixels for the intros and main menus. This mode limits the BBC Micro to just four colours on screen at any one time. This was originally done to try and save some disk space, as I was investigating the possibility of using tapes as a storage and sales medium to actually help distribute the game when finished. However, I found out that tape is far too slow and not able to load on the fly, so simply not viable. Nanogangs is going to need four 200K single-sided discs or two double-sided discs, or a more modern SD card solution like MMC, or as I've just discussed, the new SPI modules, which I really do hope to be get working soon. So let's take a look at the build. Um, we're running with Beeb M on a Mac. I'm putting it through an emulator because it's just a bit easier to get a decent video signal out the other end uh, for you to watch what's going on. So this is emulating the stock BBC Micro Model B with 32K. Let's just chain in it, which is the initialized uh, program file that we'll start with. And you'll notice there's something pretty up to begin with that's not ancient hebrew i promise you i'll explain what's going on in a minute but that's not right but just bear with me so this is the mode one intro and title screens and this is the mode one uh, menuing and it's yeah it's not good <laughs> i think is the uh there's one hell of a glitch and then when we actually load up and get into the actual gameplay, it's still one hell of a glitch. Okay, so what's going on there? If I set the emulator to run as a BBC Master 128, you'll notice that it's actually a custom font and it now works. So it's a bug when doing a custom font or changing the basic character set 
Now I did this using Microsoft Excel and I created the 8x8 pixel plotting charts if you like and I did the auto sums to calculate the uh, numbers that I'd need to put in using VDU commands which are kind of like peek, peek and poke commands on other systems. The Boost Micro didn't have that so it has what's called VDU commands that do exactly the same thing. So VDU23 is for defining the character set and I did that not only to define new characters to make sprites up, because BBC Mike has no onboard sprite engine, but also I decided to change the system font to a sort of scrolly, handwritten looking font. This is all a custom font designed each letter individually by myself. Uh, unfortunately, the Model B, the stock Model B, really, really hated that and did what you saw when we went into the game. But here is the game as it is now. So extra controls I don't think work. Credits take you back to the uh, load screen. So we go new, new game. There's two Nanogangs preloaded. This is running mode one. This replaces the older mode two low resolution uh, menu that we had uh, previously. But now we can go new player and we can actually make a, a player up. So, uh, oh, we need to think of a new name now. Dave, there we are. We're having Dave in the game. And I've now got this slightly improved system for actually making a custom character so i wanted to bring well, it's a relatively modern gaming feature into this 8-bit class environment the idea of being able to make a custom character so we can flip through the colors now you'll notice what's actually happening here is because mode one can only support four colors including black and white on the screen what it's actually doing is it's changing the palette so it creates the options that we need to make flexible colors by flick flicking the colors for the uh, the main character but you'll notice all the menus are all changing color at the same time so it's a bit of a trade-off but it does give us the customization ability for the character so um let's do that so we'll go continue now it switches to mode two and we start we level one with our custom character so I remind you, this is all written entirely in basic. While we're here, one thing I will show you is that I've now coded it so there's foreground and background layered objects. So you can see these uh, bits of grass or plants here. You can now basically walk or hop straight through them because it treats these as background objects that have no real uh, interaction with the character. We can jump to the next screen. So instead of scrolling, it does it screen by screen basis. And new for this, we can actually jump back and we can hop back into the first screen. So this gives us a little bit more flexibility, a bit more open worldness with the game. Okay, so this is, or will be uh, the second world. This will be level three, which is the second world. Um, no, it won't tell a lie. Second world level two, uh, third screen world. So each level has sort of two worlds, part one, part two in it. Um, so this is going to be the meadow, and uh, it has the ability that you can fall, still fall down and die. Uh, you'll notice where it's seeding the um, or respawning the sprite is kind of putting it in the side of the hill. Uh, I need to fix that. It's not a major issue. And again, we've got this sort of uh, lighter coloured background piece that you can walk straight through however on this side you can actually interact with it and jump up but it won't work on that side which is kind of cool you'll also notice there's a number 11 at the top and it says LV loaded these are just notes that I put into the code so I know if a certain variable has been triggered and actually know where I am in the program. So these will be gone for the production version, but in this they're still in because this is still very much a development alpha build. So one final thing we can do is jump and that will actually break the game at the moment because there's, there's nothing there. So it kind of sits there and goes, uh, and it, that's kind of it. So you can escape or you can just reset. Now let's switch back to model B. So, as I explained, this doesn't work properly uh, on the stock Model B. But one thing I have been playing with is using the external 6502 co-processor. Now, you can either have these as the original cheese wedge unit that sat alongside uh, BBC Micro, or, in the modern days, the Pi Tube Direct module 
that uses Raspberry Pi and an interface board called the Direct PiTube Direct Module to actually interface between the tube interface and the 40 pin GPIO of a Pi. And you can get the versions that sit underneath and plug into the uh, Model B, or you can get the one that actually sits inside a uh, BBC master. And this gives you the ability to have all sorts of extra processors. Um, the quickest way to do that in emulator, we can switch on the stock 6502 second processor. And you see the prompt now changes, and it now jumps to 64K of RAM, not 32 as before with the Model B. And also it now runs the processor at 3 megahertz. Another interesting fact I found, and I'm just going to chain into my init file, is this is now still a Model B. The font problem goes away. It now runs better. And it actually, because it's now running at 3 megahertz as opposed to 2, it's going to run a little bit faster, a little bit smoother. So let's just go in with the, one of the preloaded stock characters. And you'll notice that's already a lot smoother and a lot quicker. So I'm tempted to make this a co-pro necessary game. I don't know. I don't want to completely knock out everyone who had the original Model Bs, but it's not going to work with the custom fonts. So I'm either going to have to create a, a front loader that you can turn the custom fonts off and just use system font. Um, I don't sure, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Actually, one other thing I'll just show you. You probably already guessed this. If I hit escape and let's just put the computer into mode one and then ask it to list. Uh, you'll notice that the font is actually changed the system font of the BBC Micro. So the Nana Gang's custom font is now on everything. Even when you change screen modes, clear the screen, end the program, the font is still loaded into the uh, cache of the OS. And it doesn't really matter what screen mode you use, it's still it's still there. So this is uh, high resolution black and white mode one. And yeah, so you, it doesn't make the code particularly readable. So um, you do need to do a reset. And finally, this rather interesting idea of how to optimize basic better. This has brought to my attention as part of episode 155 of Coco Talk, which is a US based weekly online talk program all about the Tandy color computer or Coco and its other Motorola 68K version derivatives. If I play you a brief clip here, basically in this episode, they discuss the idea that basic can be sped up if you replace if and commands with if if. Now, the color computer uses a derivative of Microsoft basic, as does the Commodore 64. Now, I'm not sure how well this will work with BBC basic, but it is a really intriguing idea. I'll leave the description to this episode at the precise point they start talking about this because it is a fascinating idea. If we have a look at the source code for the main uh, sprite driver code for Nanogangs, you'll find that we actually do have here in basic, we have the if and or and type logic. Now, apparently uh, the article in Coco Talk suggested that basic will read the if, so if dl equals zero and in case that's a key press or dl equals eight and now obviously if this if dl does not equal zero then the rest of the statement is going to be false and so it shouldn't be acted but apparently basic actually will read this even if that's false it'll still go and and check all these other things to make sure they're true or false that's extremely tedious and takes up a lot of processor time and it's completely unnecessary hence on an 8-bit machine with minimal speed, minimal RAM, you're taking up valuable processor time just doing processes that aren't necessary. The logic to how this works is kind of like this. We'll start with a brief program. So let's say uh, we need to put some variables in. So 10 a oops equals, uh, let's say 20. 20, and we'll take a variable called b, and let's say that equals 10. So what the idea is that with 30 in traditional basic, you'll make a statement like if a equal, oops, if a equals 20 and b equals 10, 
then print um, correct else print wrong okay so if we run this program it'll come back as correct because uh, a will equal 20 and b equals 10 and we can check what the variables mean by just going print a will come back as 20 print b comes back as 10. so if i now change a variable and i go 20 b equals uh let's say 15 okay now let's run the program again it'll come back as wrong because the two don't equal the correct number now what they're suggesting with google talk is that you don't need the if and then statement so if we retype our line first it's clear the screen let's just retype line 30 so instead we could say if a equals then it will go if b equals 15 we don't need to put the then statement in we can shorten print to p dot like that now if we run the program it still runs it does exactly the same logic but it's just reading that first if a equals 20 statement and if a didn't equal 20 it would just ignore the rest of the line and carry on so that's a really really interesting piece of basic optimization and something i really think i need to think about rewriting my logic in nanogangs put this in to make it run a bit better and possibly a bit faster well that brings us to the end of this update if you are on patreon that's patreon.com forward slash wi-fi sheet the latest build of nanogangs will be available now on our free dollar tier and once again thank you for all of you that are supporting us on the patreon platform if you're brand new around here thank you so much for your company don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you real soon right here on the channel until next time bye for now